Yo, what's going on y'all? It's your boy Jay Cray and I'm back with another one, but this is a little different. This is video number one of my Ask Cray series. All right, so somebody asked me a question. I'll leave that person anonymous, but he was a collegiate thrower. And this person asked me, what ball should I be throwing right now? You know, and that question kind of opened up this little can of worms that I had. Not really can of worms, but it opened up this little thought process that I have on what balls you should be throwing when you should be throwing them. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this as short as I possibly can. I've already recorded this video once and it was 24 minutes, no. No way I'm doing that. I'm going to try to get it done here in under seven or eight minutes, try to condense it a little bit. So I think about it like this. I think it's a two-step process. Step number one, figure out what kind of thrower are you. Are you a speed thrower like I would consider myself or like a Sergey Livinov Jr., a Kidway Johnson, someone like that, you know? Are you a balanced thrower? You know, I would consider somebody like a Pavel Fajek to be balanced, Primo Cosmos, um, I consider my coach Judd Logan to be more so balanced. You know what I mean? Is that the kind of thrower you are? Or are you a strength thrower? Um, you know, like... Mm, I can't really think of any strength throwers off the top of my head for whatever reason, but if that's the category you fall into, that's totally fine. That is totally fine. If you're strong, you need to be strong to make the ball go far. Hey, do what you got to do, man. Kudos to you. But really, I think that's what you need to do. You need to identify that. Well, you know, you may ask, how do I identify that? Are you better throwing light balls or are you better throwing heavy balls? How would you compare that? Every single ball has some form of correlation with the comp ball, okay? For example, like the 6K ball or 6 kilogram ball in correlation with the 7.26K is anywhere from like five to six meters usually, okay? My correlations are a little bit higher because I'm better with light balls. My heavy ball correlations are a little bit lower than what's recommended. So like, for example, if a 9K correlation is 12 meters, so if you throw the 9K 52 meters, that predicts 64 meters, right? My correlation is a little bit off. The year, I, well last year when I threw 71 meters or almost 71 meters, 70 meters, 71, I'll be precise. That year I've only thrown the 9K 54 meters. So that became more of a 16 meter ball for me. Things like that. You start to notice little trends like that. And I mean, just be honest, are you a fast twitch athlete? Do you have a high vertical? Do you have a fast 40 yard dash time? Things like that. If you do, if you have a great vert, great 40 yard dash time or you're just quick, agile, whatever, you're more than likely a speed thrower. You know what I mean? If you may not be so fast, may not have the greatest vertical, but can go in the weight room and squat over five at any given time, okay, you may be more of a, of a strength thrower. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. They are both athletic human beings just on two different ends of the spectrum. That's fine. First and foremost, figure that out, okay? Once you have that figured out, move on to step two. When do you implement that weakness you know if you're a strength thrower when do you implement light balls if you're a speed thrower when do you implement heavy balls i'll use myself for an example so since i consider myself more so of a speed thrower let's use last year as an example 2016 well summer and fall of 2016 going into spring 2017. so that summer and that fall of 2016 i'd say anywhere from 65 to 75 percent of my volume was with heavier implements a lot of 10K, a lot of 9K, a lot of 18. That was actually my first ball cycle of the summer. It was 10K, 9K, 18 pounds. Yeah, I threw that for about six weeks or so, you know, and then and then Judd and I agreed on, you know, bringing in the 16, just things like that, right? But 65 to 75% of my volume in the summer, and I would say more towards the 65 to 70% range of my volume in the fall was with heavier implements. Okay, going into the winter, I'd say I was more so around 55 to 65% of my volume being heavier implements or heavy balls. And then you incorporate the weight, you treat the weight as a heavy ball. That's gonna keep that volume number at 60% or so, all right? I'm just gonna bring the weight in with the hammer. I know they're two different things, different topic for another day. So yeah, I would say my volume was 55 to 60% heavy. You know, as I go into the spring, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a light ball thrower. You know, I throw the light balls farther than I probably should as a 70 meter, 71 guy, okay? Now I start to bring those in and sprinkle them in at the end of my session. I start to take four to six throws off of three heels with the 5K or, you know, I start sprinkling in four to six throws with the 6K that are fools, you know what I mean? I start to sprinkle that in because that's my bread and butter. 
once I start to sprinkle that in, the 16 is gonna to start to go further and I have the specific strength that I need built from those heavier implements that I threw in that summer and that fall. You know what I mean? So heavy balls have a place and light balls have a place, you know? My summer and fall of 2016, the heavy balls took priority. You know, as we entered in the winter, the priority went down. As we hit the spring, they evened out a little bit. I always kept a heavy ball in, but my heavy ball dropped down to more of an 18 or an eight kilo, especially towards the later end of my season, summer 2017, going into NCAAs and going into USAs. You know, I was throwing 8K, 8K and I was throwing a 7K, you know, the 15.5 pound ball. Those were my, my balls going in to USAs and when I threw almost 71 meters, that was the ball cycle I was using. That worked for me, you know? I was able to move in competition speed with the 15.5 and the 8K was heavy enough for me to respect it and I still had to hit good positions with it. You know, that was for me. If you are a strength thrower, you would kind of reverse engineer what I did. I wouldn't say 65 to 75% of your volume would be light balls in the summer and fall because you're gonna tax your central nervous system. You're gonna kill it, right? But I say that you should still have some form of lighter implement sprinkled in in the summer and in the fall. You need to learn how to move a little bit more efficient. You're strong, you can hit those positions, but you need to learn how to move just a little bit more, okay? So if you were to ask me, I'd say, look, you know, if you were a guy that was more so a strength-based thrower in the summer and fall, you know, maybe touch a little 6K, 5K, but do it off of, you know, do some two heel work so you can emulate turns three and four. Do some two heel work, sprinkle that in at the end of your session, you know. I would say if you're, if you're training four days a week, sprinkle that in at the end of those first two sessions, you know, four to six throws, just to move, just to teach your body how to say pop, pop, and to just go, you know what I mean? If you do it little by little like that, you won't have to worry about taxing your central nervous system or anything like that, you know? Or I would say, you know, keep it a little bit on the heavier end, you know? You know, if you're gonna work in some light ball and not sprinkle it in, if you're gonna like really, really work it in and actually put that as part of your actual training program or that training block, you know, touch some 15. You know, touch some 15 pound hammers, touch some 14 pound hammers, things like that. Just sprinkle them in here and there. And then as you get closer to that outdoor season, you should have had reap the benefits of throwing a little bit of light ball in the summer and the fall. Now, all right, let's go see if we can hit some fools with the 6K, with the 5K, things like that. So yeah, I would just do it like that if you're more of a strength-based thrower. If you are a balanced thrower, look, you have the best of both worlds. You can play around and configure with whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? You have more freedom to do what you want to do, you know? Train a little more heavy oriented in the summer, fall. Move to the light balls in the winter, early spring, whatever, you know? That's all depending on you, the kind of thrower you are. Really only you can make that call. Now I will say this for my speed throwers that dread throwing heavy balls like me i hate throwing heavy balls but i do them you know and i do them to the best of my own ability i can be hit or miss with them but i still try how i get a lot of my heavy ball volume in is doing drills with the heavy ball okay so let's say for example if i have a day let's say it's it's um okay let's use this as an example let's say it's the summer and i have 16 throws planned with the 18 pound hammer, okay? Before I move on, let's not say 18, let's say 9K, the 9K hammer. Let's say I have a total of 16 total throws scheduled with that ball before I move on to the 18, 8K, whatever, okay? I would say my first eight throws will be some form of drill, whether if it's a setting drill, you know, one wind, one turn, two winds, two turns, two wind, three turn throw, or a walk around drill, helicopter drill, wrap around drill, whatever, I would get a lot of that volume in drilling with the ball. And the reason why I would do that is because if I take my first three or four throws winding with a heavy ball, I'm all over the place, I just am. You know, that's just me, okay? So what I would do is I would just drill with that ball, really get used to the ball, feel the ball move a little bit more efficient than I would off of a full four turn throw by doing the five turn or six turn walk around. Now when it's time for me to move on to my fools with that heavy ball, I've now felt the heavy ball move. I felt it in my fingertips, you know, I felt it move a little bit faster Then it probably will move in this full throw. Now I'm ready to get some good stuff out of that heavy ball. You know what I mean? So that's what I do. I drill, drill, drill. You can even do that with a light ball. If you're on the other end of the spectrum and you are a strength thrower, you can even do that with the light ball 
why always try to throw the light bulb off of a fool if you know that you struggle with the light bulb? You know what I mean? No. Do one wine, two heel work, one wine, three heel work. Do some setic drills, you know, one wine, one turn, two wines, two turns, two wine, two turn throw, you know, just things like that. Just to help you dabble that light bulb in to your cycle so you can learn how to move a little bit. You can learn how to feel the light bulb because that's one big issue some strength throwers have. They can't feel those lighter implements, you know what I mean? So I would say, don't be afraid to sprinkle the heavy ball in if you're a speed thrower or the light ball in if you are a strength thrower but in by doing drills. Don't be afraid to sprinkle it in by doing drills. I promise you, you will still reap some great benefits and you will become a better hammer thrower as a result. So guys, that's all I have for you on today. Like I said, I was gonna be short and sweet. Hopefully I did not go on too much of a tangent. If you enjoyed this informative video, you know, like it, share it, subscribe, all that jazz. If you guys have any more questions to ask me, slide into my DMs, drop a comment down below this video. Do things like that. Ask me more questions, you know. This is my Ask Cray series, you know. So ask me and I'll make more videos like this answering them. You know, I wanna answer questions and I wanna help you guys out to the best of my own ability. You know, if it's a question that I know my bro Sean Diddles is going to answer, I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to let him handle that. You know, he's doing his thing with his channel. I'm not going to interfere with that at all. If it's a topic that both of us can cover, I'll cover it too. You know what I mean? Just depends on what it is. But if you have any questions, any concerns, whatever, shoot them at me. I will be happy to put something together and I will be happy to answer them. But guys, really, that's all I have. Thank you so much. And until next time, Jay Crayon is out. Peace.